how to avoid muddy colours in watercolour. That's what we're going to be discussing in this video. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel I help you with watercolour tips and techniques, a little bit of drawing and mixed media painting. I make one free video a week for you on a Thursday on YouTube with extra video content for my Patreon subscribers. Now muddy watercolours can be a problem with watercolour painting, particularly if you're a beginner. So by muddy watercolours I mean watercolours that just look a bit sludgy and dirty and they don't have the vibrancy and the bright colours that perhaps you've seen in other people's work. Now often people go onto Facebook groups or online forums and they say I'm having a problem, why are my watercolours muddy, what do I do? And then advice is dispensed by other artists and um, the most common thing that I hear is you must only use transparent paints. Don't use any opaque colours, only transparent paints. Another thing that is often said is granulating colours. Don't use granulating pigments. Um, other things that may, may be said are um, don't use cheap paints, only expensive good quality paints. Now none of this advice is wrong but it's a little bit too simplified and you know if only life were that easy. So saying that you should only use transparent colours and that will sort out your entire problem of muddy watercolours is a bit like saying you'd be a fantastic cook if only you got a really sharp set of knives. So in this video I'm going to go through 10 possible causes of muddy watercolours. You may just find that one of these causes is uh, the you know the root of your problems. Maybe you've got a problem with all of them or perhaps you know you can pick and choose three or four of them might be causing you trouble. So we're going to be looking at each one of these problems Often they're not a problem in their own right, but um, combined with other things, they can be causing you difficulties. So I'm going to look at the things that are commonly advised, and I'm also going to look at some other things that you may not have heard of, and we're going to get to the root of the problem of why your watercolours are coming out a little bit muddy. So let's look first of all at that most commonly given piece of advice. Only use transparent colours, don't use opaque colours, it's these opaque pigments and opaque colours that are causing the muddiness in your watercolour painting. Now there is a grain of truth in this, in that if you muddy up and murk up your whole palette with opaque pigments and mix them into everything, certainly they don't reflect the light, they don't let the paper show through and they can cause you a little bit of a problem. But simply the fact that opaque pigments exist or using them in your work isn't a problem in its own right. So I should point out here that I use opaque pigments all of the time. I'm going to put up, while I'm talking, I'm going to put up a few of my paintings and you can judge for yourself whether or not you would consider them to be muddy. There's all sorts of criticism you could level at my work if you don't like it. Um, too bright, too gaudy, too unrealistic, you know, pick, pick one or all of them but I don't think anybody would ever accuse my paintings of being muddy. And I use opaque pigments all of the time. Now, I consider opaque pigments to be really, really beautiful. They're the thing that makes everything glow. Now, you ma imagine a stained glass window. The only reason it looks so bright and so glowy is because you've got that dark brickwork around it. So opaque pigments and opaque colours can actually make transparent colours look more vibrant and to glow more vibrantly. The trick is not to let them pollute your whole palette. Now, if opaque pigments were the things that made everything muddy, well, it makes no sense. If you look at oil painters, people that use opaque pigments all of the time, you know, oil painters, if you think of things like lino prints, do you look at a lot of those and think, oh God, that's so muddy and murky? Of course you don't. Opa opaque pigments are not the problem. They can make your paint a little bit muddier and a little bit murkier. So you need to be careful with them. Don't allow them to mix through every single part of your painting. But on their own, opaque pigments do not cause mud. So let's look next at one or two of the easier things to fix. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is painting water. Of course you know that you should change your painting water and most people do change their water perhaps two or three times during the course of a painting. I'm suggesting you should be paint changing it much more often than that. Now I walk around art classes and sometimes students say to me, well, you know, I don't know what's the matter. I don't know why I'm getting all of this mud and why I'm getting this murky sort of murky painting effect. I wanted it to be much brighter and clearer than this. And I look at their water jar and it looks like soup. It's so important to change your water, particularly when you're going between very, very different colours. 
I won't get too much into color theory in this uh, in this video but you know think about color opposites if your water is rather yellow and you're about to paint with green that's not too bad because yellow is part of green however if your water is a little bit yellow and you're going to go on to painting lilac or purple you need to stop and change that water and you should be working with crystal clear water the other thing I advise you to do is to have at least two water jars on the go. So one for the initial rinse and one for clean water or for the second rinse of your brush so that you're working with water that's pretty clean all of the time. And if you're going between those color opposites or if you're going from, um, from neutrals like browns and grays onto brighter colors, just make sure you find some way of changing your water really frequently. I mean, even if the water is just slightly discolored, changing water again and again. So right on the heels of mucky water, we have mucky palettes. So number three on my list of 10 possible causes of your muddy watercolor is your palette itself. Now I've got one here that I've been using. I actually take it to my art classes. It's not one that I use regularly, so it's very, very mucky, but I just wanna show you the shape of it. So this is one with, um, with these square wells. Now this uh, this particular shape of palette, I think it's um, I think it's made by Frisk. It's a really good palette, and um, I'm still really fond of this shape of palette. So I'm not saying that this is a bad shape of palette. I like the fact they've got wells around the outside. They've got these big wells for mixing. You always want big wells for mixing your colours. But the slight issue with this one is that it's square, which means that the paint gets stuck right in these little corners in here. So if you have this kind of palette, I want you, when you finish painting each time, usually I clean my palettes after I finish a whole painting. It's a good thing to get into, clean your paints, clean your palettes when you finish that painting. What you wanna do is get an old toothbrush and get it right into those corners. Because if you allow a load of dried paint to sit in those corners, when you come to mix the next color, it's gonna come out and pollute your colors. Now the palettes that I use at home more often myself now are these ones here. Now see the different shape of the wells and um, I've been painting this one here, some, some dry paint in it. Can you see that the paint has all gone to the center? It can't sit in the corners, which makes this actually a much easier palette to clean. Now, like I said, there's no problem with the other palettes. If you've got the ones with those very square wells and very square holes, you're gonna have to just be a little bit better at cleaning it and you want to keep your palette clean. You should never ever be mixing any color in a palette well that's got dirty bits of another color around the outside. So it's all about color cleanliness and that's far, far more important than the type of pigments that you're using. Now my fourth possible cause of muddy paintings, and this won't apply to all of you, but it does apply to you know, quite a few students that I see. They get very attached to one particular color. It's usually a dark or an earth color and they use it throughout all of their paintings to adjust things with and to use for darks and to use for shadows. And it's just too much of the same color. Now, often this can be black if you're a beginner, you don't know how to darken colors, so your immediate response is to put black in everything. But it could equally be something like Payne's Gray. People are very fond of Payne's Gray. Now, some professional artists recommend never using Payne's Gray. I'm not one of those artists. I love Payne's Gray. There are no bad colors. It's a great color for when it's appropriate, but it's not the right color for everything. It's not the color for every single shadow that you ever come across. It's a bit too murky for some situations. I had one student, um, a lovely lady, but her paintings were always a bit mucky and a bit murky, and she was putting raw umber in pretty much everything. It's a kind of a cool light brown on its own. It's a nice color. I use it quite a lot for things like beaches. You can mix it into colors for concrete and things like that but she was using it whenever she wanted to make things just a little bit darker or to have a little bit of an earth tone or a shadow in there. So are you somebody that is over-reliant on one color for shadows and for darks? Think about this carefully. If that's you, I want you to find new alternatives because just putting that color into everything is gonna make your paintings muddy. At this point, could I just ask for a quick favor? At the time of making this video, we're all in lockdown over the coronavirus in the UK. I can't get out and teach my regular classes, so I'd really like for my YouTube videos to reach a wider audience. And they will do that if they have audience interaction. So if you could just click the like button or share or leave me a comment, that would be fantastic. And I'm really, really grateful. Now at number five in our causes of muddy paintings, supposedly we have granulating pigments. People, I've known people go out of their way to avoid any granulating pigments. And my goodness, it's such a shame 
you know they are the most beautiful pigments in watercolor granulating pigments are wonderful however i perfectly understand that there can be an issue with them particularly certain types now cerulean blue can be rather delicate and very pretty and the granulation doesn't tend to sort of overwhelm everything However, there can be some colours like um, like burnt umber, particularly I'm thinking of ultramarine blue. Ultramarine can be really, really difficult in making paintings muddy and murky. It doesn't help that it's combined with these heavily granular pigments and also it's got a touch of red in. So if you're using it in greens, it can dull them down. So granulating pigments, just like semi-opaque pigments and opaque pigments, use them in specific places and specific colour mixes but don't allow them to work through every area of your painting, otherwise they can a little bit contribute to muddiness. Now the next one I want to talk about is muted or mixed colours. I've heard people give this advice as well, only mix from single pigment colours and only mix one or two at a time. You don't want to be mixing tons and tons of pigments into your mixes and getting these really, really dull muted colours. Now, sorry, but I do this all the time. Half the time, I don't even know what I've got mixed together. I just think, well, I like that. That's a nice mix and chuck it in. I've also got some ready mixed um, tube colors that have multiple, multiple pigments in that are not single pigment colors. Now, people that say that muted colors are the cause of muddy paintings need to go for a walk where I live in the winter, you know, in the autumn and that beautiful, beautiful, soft, cold, misty morning when everything's soft, everything's misty, every single colour you look at is muted. I bet you've never been out on a day like that and thought to yourself, well, it's very, very muddy, it's very murky, it looks very dull today. Of course it doesn't. Those colours are some of the most beautiful colours we have. There is nothing wrong with mixed or muted colours. Again, you know, it takes a very skillful hand to get them through a whole painting without looking the painting looking a bit dull, but muted or mixed colors are not bad in the, of themselves. Again, this is something just like opaque pigments, I like to play those muted colors off against those stronger, purer, more transparent colors. Now, the next thing we're going to look at as a possible cause of your muddy watercolor paintings is cheap paints. Now, there are basically three levels of paints when it comes to expense. You have artist quality made from the finest pigments, you have students quality which are pretty good but a little bit lower down and they may have one or two fillers in them and so not be quite as vibrant and then you have right below that i mean and i don't mean just you know below it i mean a long way below it if you've got artists and then you've got students you know right down here are your stationers paints your drugstore paints those cheap shop paints those unbranded paints they are full of fillers and full of so much gum arabic and they are they tend to be very chalky very smeary and yes they will cause you to have dull watercolors you really can't paint well unless you have good paints this doesn't mean you need to despair unless you can afford you know a full range of daniel smith watercolors you can just get by with students quality paints However, within each student's quality range, what you will find is that the majority of them are very good, but you might find that just one or two colours don't look so great. And it's often the colours with more expensive pigments because those are the ones that they're going to be reducing the, uh, the pigment levels on. And those are the ones where they're going to be using pigments from a cheaper source or putting fillers into. So if you have got a student's quality range, just you know, paint them on um, a piece of paper, paint some swatches. There may just be one or two that don't do well in that color range, and then you could consider trying some from a different brand. The other thing you can do, if you want to move from student's quality to artist quality, but you can't afford it, buy your student's quality, and then the ones that run out first, which tends to be the weaker colors, things like cerulean and lemon, the ones that run out first, once you have a tube of paint run out, replace that tube or that pan, that block, with one of the same color from the artist range or from another artist range. In this way, you can, because some colors last for absolutely months, you know, Payne's Gray, these strong colors, they last for months. In that way, you can gradually move up to a range of artist colors without having to fork out, you know, hundreds of pounds or hundreds of dollars right at the beginning. But generally speaking, students' quality will be fine for a beginner and they're perfectly vibrant enough. Just take a look at them and just make sure there aren't perhaps one or two colors in that range that aren't doing so well for you. If they just look murky and muddy, consider swapping them out. So this next one is a huge deal. And in my opinion, it's probably the biggest cause of muddy paintings. It's nothing to do with pigments, it's nothing to do with dirty palettes, it's lack of tonal contrast. 
Now, if you go around an, um, an art exhibition of very amateur paintings and you're looking around, you think, well, none of these are very good. There's usually two things that are wrong with them. Thing number one is drawing skills usually are lacking. But the thing that you will always, always find in amateur paintings, it really sets amateur and professional work apart, is a lack of tonal contrast. When you don't have tonal contrast, then everything looks the same. It may have different colours, but it's not going to glow, it's not going to be vibrant, because the amount of lights and darks, there's not a strong enough contrast, there's not a strong enough range between the lights and the darks in order to get that big tonal contrast, which will make your colours glow and be brighter and darker and stronger and lighter, and just have this overall effect of making your paintings more vibrant. If you don't understand tonal contrast or you think it might be lacking in your own paintings, I have a video I did all about it. I'll link to that one up above. Do have a look at that. It's a big, big deal. It's not something that's spoken about often when it comes to muddy paintings, but I can tell you it's one of the main causes, lack of tonal contrast. So let's look at my ninth possible cause of muddy paintings. And this one, again, is very little spoken of, but it's really important. And that's people that don't understand how to mix colors. Now, if you don't have an understanding of color mixing, it's gonna be very hard for you because you're going to end up accidentally mixing certain colors that make other colors dull. So this is something you really need to up your skill level on. If you're one of these people that just can't understand color mixing, it doesn't matter how many books you read, it doesn't matter how much you know, how many tutorials you look at online about color mixing, you just don't understand it. And believe me, I get it because although I'm not like that about colors, I am like that about maths. I can even read something about maths. I think, oh, I understand that. And then the second I've put the book down, gone, absolutely gone. And I know that certain people just cannot get color mixing. If you cannot get color mixing, then I have a solution for you. And the solution is just to make lots and lots of color charts. If you understand what each of your colors looks like when mixed with other colors and when mixed with um, varying amounts of water, then you are a good way to understanding how to put your colors on the paper. Even if you can't get color theory, at least make color swatches and mix all of your colors with all of your other colors to see how they look and write down the results and get yourself organized with color charts so that you have a much wider range of colors to work from and so that you're not accidentally creating colors that are duller than the colors that you would like to create. So the last one I'm going to talk about is tube greens or ready mixed greens. Again, these are not a problem in their own right. However, if, um, if you're a beginner and you don't really understand how to make your own greens and you're always reaching for those ready-made greens, I see this so many times with beginner's landscapes and they do look muddy and murky and it's really just a matter of the fact that they're using too much of the same color. They're just using the same green in everything and they might adjust it a little bit, but it's not a lot of difference. And if you've got a painting where there's just a lot of one color, it can look very dull and very boring. Now, often I see it with greens, but it doesn't have to be green. It could also be a painting that's got a lot of browns in, a lot of natural shades, a lot of greys, you know, a lot of those duller shades. Wherever you have something you're trying to depict that has loads of greens or loads of greys or loads of browns or loads of any other color, to be honest, you need to find hugely different colors. So you need to find a whole range of beautiful greys. You need to find a whole range of browns and earth colors, and you need to find a whole range of greens and you won't do it just by using one or two ready-made greens and by adjusting them here and there so if this is your problem you think that you're um, you know when you've got subjects where everything is pretty much the same color and you're not finding enough variation again color charts are the answer so you haven't just got your ready mix greens and your tube greens and you shouldn't automatically reach for them there is nothing inherently wrong with having them or using them i'm not against having them but you need to understand how to mix greens as well because out there in the natural world there are so many greens and you're just not going to get enough if that's the um, if that's the approach that you're taking currently. So in as well as your greens, the ones that you already own, I want you to make a colour chart of your yellows and your blues. So put your blues down one side, your yellows along the top and by yellows you can go all the way along to orange and by blues you can also go down to things like Payne's Grey and Black and then as you go across, just like a map reference, blues, yellows, or the other way around, doesn't matter. Take it across and mix those colors together and see how many different greens that you can make. And within each of those little green swatches, you have a whole load of other greens, depending if you add more or less 
um, blue or yellow and more or less water. So I want you to find more color mixing variation. You don't need to understand color theory to do this. You just need to spend some time getting to know your paints and making color charts. So do let me know in the comments if any of the things I've mentioned today have given you a bit of a solution to your own problems with muddy paintings or perhaps you've got some other solutions that I haven't mentioned in this video. Be really interested to hear about those. Do also have a look in my video description. I've got some free downloadable PDFs you can grab there. Also you can find a link to my Facebook group if you'd like to come over and join that. I've also got details of my Patreon page which I've set up recently so you can get extra content and extra videos and things that don't necessarily do as well on YouTube but that I would like to share with you. You can watch another one of my videos right now.